Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Indie Game Business Sessions, the Winter 2020 edition. So next up, we've got Naman Jane. He is from Alecular. Is that pronounced that? Is yep, that, yeah, it's Alecular. Uh, see, I'm, I'm on a roll this morning. So uh, <laughs> he is going to be going through, you know, like I said, at the end of the last talk, stuff that is going to go right over the top of my head. That's why I get other people to talk about it. Uh, okay. How to improve your game's retention and monetization through data-driven experimentation. Uh, and so with that, Naman, I'll let you inter introduce yourself and, and get going. And as questions come in, we'll, we'll pop them up and I'll read them off to you, man. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, it sounds like a very complicated topic, but it's not. And I will try my best to make it as simple as possible. And I'm sure um, all, all, it, it's not as complicated <laughs> as it sounds like. I'm just very good at making things sound a lot more complicated and sound like I'm smart, but I'm not. <laughs> but anyways, so um, today um, I'm going to be talking at, uh, about experimentation specifically in gaming and how you can increase your retention and monetization. So um, actually, I was giving a test talk uh, just before this to my colleague. And she told me to speak really slow because usually I speak really quickly. So hopefully uh, you guys will still be awake by the end of the presentation. So I'm gonna try <laughs> and speak a lot slower than I usually do, but let's go ahead. So uh, in today's agenda, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what experimentation is um, and what is the process of experimentation and who should use it because not everybody is top priority is retention and monetization. So for example, if you're a mobile game with in-app purchases, a free mobile game with in-app purchases, this is obviously your top priority, retention and monetization. But if you're, for example, uh, selling a one-time purchased game, um, then maybe retention and monetization is not as important for you. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and at the end, we will also talk about the pitfalls of experimentation and how you can overcome them. Um, so I'm going to start off um, with uh, explaining what A-B testing is first, because, um, and I'm sure a lot of you might already know this, but I just want to set the base and the context before I start talking about experimentation. So A-B testing is all about testing which user experience is better. Um, and if you're having a day-long fight with your uh, fellow designer and trying to figure out for example, if a blue button is better or a red button is better. You can basically use A-B testing and you can roll out multiple versions of your game and roll, roll them out to your players um, and see which one is performing better. Um, and I would like to emphasize that better is very subjective over here. So depending on your goals, so maybe your goal might be to increase your retention rate. So maybe you're, you want to increase your day one retention or day seven retention or you want to increase your conversion rates for your in-app purchases. So these are the different metrics you're going to be measuring to see which user experience is better. So it's very subjective what better is. And this is what you can use uh, A-B testing for. And now I'm going to go ahead and explain what experimentation actually is. So experimentation is a process where you start uh, by collecting data and um, and you can basically um, start collecting data from your game. So when your players are playing your game, they're emitting uh, events that you can collect into your data warehouse and, and put it into a single data warehouse. And this, what, what this enables you to do is quickly access this data. And you can use technologies uh, such as Redshift and BigQuery from AWS and Google. We can talk about that later in detail. But you can store all of this data um, and, and, what have, and what this enables you to do is ask product questions about your game. So for example, you, you can ask questions such as, um, what are the most common player paths uh, that are uh, player paths to purchasing an in-app purchase? Or what are the number of people that are dropping out in your tutorial? And once you have this data you're, and you're able to answer these questions using the data you have collected, you're able, you will be able to identify bottlenecks in your game that are hurting your goals. And um, for let, let me give you an example. So maybe using this data, you're able to identify that your day one retention is suffering because uh, your players from your tutorials are dropping out. 
or maybe uh, you've realized that your push notifications are not as engaging as you thought they were. And now your day seven and day 30 retention is dropping now. Or let's say, for example, um, your, player, uh, uh, your, your players are not visiting your store as much as you expected. So your monetization is, is, is a bottleneck. Uh, your your uh, store visits uh, is a bottleneck in-game. So ba basically using this data, you can identify all of these bottlenecks. And the next step after you've identified these bottlenecks is formulating hypotheses to basically fix these bottlenecks. So for example, in this case, if you've identified that your tutorial is not as, as, as good as you expected it, and your day one retention is suffering because of this, maybe you want to revamp your tutorial and pu push out a new tutorial that is shorter or that is, um, that is more intuitive and more engaging. Or maybe you say that, OK, your push notifications are not uh, as engaging. So you want to A-B test different, sort, different messages and different timings of your push notifications to increase their engagement and to improve your day 7 or 30 retention. And now once you have, uh, you have formulated your hypothesis, you can move on to using A-B testing to actually validate your hypothesis and incrementally improve uh, and basically remove your bottlenecks and improve your uh, KPIs. And one thing I would like to emphasize over here is that um, it's, it's not going to help you by randomly A-B testing different things. This is why we need to collect data and identify bottlenecks and focus on the weak points of your game and, and, and focus on those and run A-B tests in that area to improve them incrementally. Um, so before, and, and now what we're going to do is we're going to talk uh, each step in detail and how we can uh, perform each step to, 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 to successfully imp incrementally improve your KPIs. But before we do that, I would just like to talk a little bit about what I do and how I ended up uh, giving the talk over here. So I myself, I'm a very passionate game developer. I started uh, programming in Unity and started making games back in university. And I really loved doing this. And after this, I started uh, publishing some Unity tutorials on YouTube as well and got over a million views. Um, and now, at the moment, actually, I'm a data engineer at Yelp. It's basically an American uh, company. And, and there, I help them do A-B testing and also data engineering to help uh, our business clients make better uh, 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 business decisions. And recently, I wanted to take my uh, passion for game uh, game development and data and put them together and uh, and cr uh, create uh, the company that I have now with my partner, Alecular. And we basically help game studios with um, experimentation and AI to improve their monetization and retention. And that's how um, I'm giving this talk at the moment. So back to the slides, as I said, um, um, we'll start with um, how we can uh, collect data and move on uh, from there. Um, so, yeah, so, so one thing I would like to emphasize while collecting data is that you do not want to start tracking everything uh, because this, this, this is going to create um, a lot of problems because you're going to have overhead, your engineers are going to be working, uh, working a lot to track all of these different metrics that you don't know even what you want to do with. Or, and you're going to have a lot of junk data in your data warehouse, and you're even you're going to start getting confused. Where do you start? What data to analyze? And in some cases, you might even start having performance issues because you're simply tracking everything. So you, you, you before you start even uh, logging data, you want to figure out what you want to log um, and what you want to start tracking. Um, and you start you start off with your goal. So this this model is, by the way, called GQM, which is goal question metric. So you basically start with what your goal is, and this might be retention, this might be uh, monetization, so this might be conversion rates for in-app purchases or ad revenue. Um, and once you have your goal, you can define questions. Uh, you, you you can formulate questions that define how well your goal is doing. And it sounds very abstract at the moment, but in the coming slides, I'm going to give you some examples, and, and it's going to make it a lot more clear. And once you have your questions that define how well your goal is doing, it's important to make these questions quantifiable 
So you can start uh, uh, tracking metrics to answer these questions. So I'm just going to give a quick example over here because I know this, this is very, I'm, I'm talking in very abstract terms. So now I can just make it a little bit more concrete and easier to understand. Um, so basically, um, I've put uh, as an example uh, retention as a goal over here. Um, and this is very broad for you. It might be very specific, for example, day one or day seven retention or conversion rates and so forth. And I've listed three questions here that, in my opinion, define how retention is doing. So my first question over here is how many people are finishing the tutorial? And I think this is important because um, uh, a tutorial uh, uh, greatly contributes to day one retention. And if your tutorial isn't up to bar, then a lot of people are going to be leaving um, your, your game in day one. And this is going to negatively hurt your retention. And also, these questions that I'm putting here are just examples. And this is what I came up with. It's not limited to these. You can come up with your own metrics and your, 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 your own questions and your own goal, of course. Um, and the second question I put over here is, how are people progressing through the levels? And this can also be a strong indi indicator of how your retention is doing and where exactly the problem is uh, with your retention. Um, and the third question I put down here is, are push notifications pulling back churn players? And as I mentioned before, push notifications, they, they play a big role in, in, in pulling back um, pulling back people that have turned away after day seven or day 30. Um, and that is why also push notifications, I, I think, play a big role in retention. And now, as you can see over here, I have the questions on the left. And on the right, you can see the metrics to basically answer these questions. So you have tutorial completion rate, uh, the progression funnel um, of your levels, um, and CTR of uh, the click-through rate of your push notifications to see if, if, if you're pulling back players, if they're engaging. Um, so now once you have, um, so now once you have um, identified your goal, your questions, and you're able to start tracking your metrics, what you can uh, basically do is you can start identifying bottlenecks um, and some examples are for um, you can you can identify if your push notifications are performing lower than expected, and this means that you know okay you need to focus on push notifications and you need to start fixing these. Or maybe you identify that okay people are dropping during the tutorial, so I need to do something about this. Or let's say the number of store visits are actually really low uh, and they're, they're lower than I expected. So people are not visiting your in-game store and that's why you're not getting enough purchases. And I want to emphasize that it's very important to use benchmarks over here because without benchmarks, it's hard to say how you're actually performing. So for example, let's say your game has day 40% retention and day seven is 10%. Sorry, day one is 40% retention and day seven is 10% retention. Now, how do you know if this is good or bad? So usually in, in mobile games, having have in many genres, having a day 40% retention is quite good. So maybe you do not have to focus on, on your day one retention, but in, usually in, in many genres in the mobile game, 20% uh, of day seven retention is considered good. So maybe, is maybe you can focus on your day seven retention since it's 10% and you can potentially double it. So this way you can use benchmarks and your metrics to figure out, figure out the bottlenecks. Um, and once you start figuring out um, your bottlenecks, this is where the creativity starts. And this is where you can start with coming up with ideas to fix these bottlenecks. So, so in, in some of the examples, that I have given before, you could if if your conversion rates are suffering. So if 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 your if the people let's say are going to your in-game store but they're not purchasing anything, maybe maybe you want to revamp the layout of the store to make it more intuitive or to make it more attractive, or you want to test out different uh, push notifications, or you want to test out the difficulty of the game, and you can you can come up with a lot of ideas basically to, uh, to, to fix your uh, bottlenecks. And once you've come up with a list of ideas, you need to start prioritizing them. 
based on the difficulty of implementing them and the expected value you get out of those uh, ideas. And expected value, it's a, it's, it's a little bit harder to estimate, but this is just an estimate, just so that you can prioritize uh, your task and, and optimize uh, your time and, and, and your effort that you're putting into your game. So now once you have, um, have this list and you have prioritized, um, prioritized uh, your list of, 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 of ideas, you can actually start validating them now using A-B testing. And this whole process together, put together, is basically experimentation where you start collecting data, you identify bottlenecks, you start creating ideas, and then you start uh, validating them. Um, there are a couple of things I would like to emphasize while running your A-B test. You need to keep in mind that the initial goal you had while figuring out, while uh, um, estimating the performance um, of your new ideas. So if your goal was, for example, to increase retention and you're running your A-B test, you need to keep an eye on retention, obviously. Or, or if your goal was to improve ad revenue, you need to keep an eye on how, how your ideas are actually affecting uh, ad revenue. But also at the same time, while you are focusing on your goal, you need to still keep a second eye on your other metrics. So for example, if, you are, if your goal is to increase higher ad revenue and you're experimenting with different ad placements and, 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 and trying to figure out which, which ad placement gives you higher revenue, you also want to keep an eye on your retention and see that your retention is not decreasing because obviously it's, <laughs> it's easy to, to, to increase your ad revenue and pop up ads everywhere, but your players are gonna leave if you're, if you're just popping out ads everywhere. So it's important to keep an eye on your goal, but also the secondary metrics um, other than your goal as well. Um, also, one more thing um, I would like to mention is that experimentation is a process of many A-B tests over time. And usually, um, I, I don't actually, couldn't find any statistics within the gaming industry, but outside the gaming industry, on, on average, one in seven A-B tests, on, only one seven A-B tests are um, uh, are passing, but that one A-B test can bring up to 50% uh, more uh, revenue per unique visitor. Uh, but these are, again, uh, numbers outside from the gaming industry, but this shows that there's a lot of potential also using it in-game um, and in, in, in the gaming industry. And it also shows that um, experimentation is a lot about failing and finding that some tests that actually pass and improve your game. So I just want to go through some case studies uh, and, and some examples of their A-B testing, um, of A-B testing in the gaming industry, just to give uh, some examples. So Air Parrot is basically um, an aerial take on tower defense uh, games. So um, what they wanted to do is they wanted to increase their ad revenue, um, uh, ad revenue without uh, hurting retention, of course. And they started in, uh, experimenting with different ad placements and they basically um, ended up with this banner at the bottom um, and they were actually able to increase uh, their ad revenue without without negatively affecting their uh, player experience at all and another one that i quite like is is uh, this case study from ea games um, and they basically wanted to this is not actually directly a b testing in game but this is more with user acquisition. But I think this is still quite interesting uh, to bring up. But basically, they wanted to test, um, they, they wanted to increase uh, pre-order for SimCity. Um, and they, they, they wanted to uh, make a promotional ad banner um, where they wanted to promote the pre-order of SimCity. And they were doing an A-B test of two UIs, one with the, ad, uh, with the, with the promotional banner and one without the promotional banner. And surprisingly, they found out that the, uh, the UI without the promotional banner got 43% more, uh, uh, more buys. So this was quite baffling to me because this is very <laughs> unintuitive. And I would have imagined that having a promotional banner would actually improve uh, your, user, your, your conversion rates. But it just shows how unintuitive your players or your users can be sometimes. 
So I would like to give uh, now some examples uh, of, of, of where you can actually benefit from experimentation and where you might look inside your game um, and where you, you can start uh, experimenting with and potentially getting some results. And again, th these are, um, these are um, it, you're not limited to these ideas. Um, you can, um, yeah, you're not limited to these ideas and you can, you can continue and you can explore different areas as well. This is maybe just a starting point uh, for you. So um, you can start off by maybe looking into improving your in-game store to sell more in-app purchases. I have some slides in the in the coming slides to see uh, to to explain how you can do this. Um, also, optimizing in-game ad placements for higher ad revenue. So um, you know you can try different ad placements to find the perfect balance between ad revenue and uh, player retention. And I would like to give us example. Uh, uh, with, with, let's say, Angry Birds. So um, a, a typical user flow with Angry Birds is you log into, you, you, you open the Angry Birds app, you click the Start button, and then you start throwing Angry Birds at structures and start destroying uh, structures. And at the end, you will see, um, you will see a score board. board. Um, and now the question is, where do you exactly want to place the ad? And now you can start experimenting with different ad placements so for example, if you want to add an ad um, after the player starts, uh, the, uh, uh, starts the game, or do you want to add an ad at the end where they show the uh, scoreboard? And usually you will find out that adding an ad um, after the start button would really annoy uh, the players because they're looking, they're looking to uh, play the game and they're already starting to tap, but you've annoyed them by showing an ad. And that's why usually it's common uh, to put these ads at the end uh, and where the scoreboard is or even after that. Um, and in this case, in this user flow uh, player journey, it's obvious, fairly obvious where to put the ads. But if you have more complex games with a complex player journey, for example, an RPG game or mid-core game, uh, it, can, it can get very complicated and ad placements can get very complicated. And this is where you can start using experimentation to basically figure out where exactly to place your ads for the best balance between ad revenue and player retention. And lastly, also, uh, we can improve player retention with this. I will talk in the next slides as well on how um, you can improve player retention. So as I mentioned before, you can look into your first time user experience. So you can identify bottlenecks in your tutorials and your uh, first time user experience and see, you know, if if they're too long, if it's too short, if it's too confusing, and basically fix these issues. Optimizing uh, push notifications. So optimizing the timing and the messages for high retention. So for example, if you're, if you're sending a notification after a player has turned away, you send the push notification one day later or three days later, and what message do you send to them? So you can use experimentation to basically optimize uh, push notifications, and also balancing uh, the progression and the difficulty levels of your game. So you can try, you can experiment with different levels and see which uh, different difficulty levels and see which one is bringing uh, the, the 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 best progression for your for your players and which uh, which uh, difficulty level is basically putting them in the flow state and. Um, and you can also, obviously, with A-B testing, do safe feature rollout. So if you're rolling out new features, um, and let's say, you know, you roll, I'm sure this has happened to everyone, everyone at some point where you're rolling out a new feature and you see that your retention has gone lower or your monetization has gone lower. So with A-B testing, you can roll out your new features to a very small percentage, let's say 5 or 10%, and see how your players are reacting and roll back if, if it has a negative effect. And also you can improve in-game stores so you can experiment with different special offers, have different product offerings and see which one are the best and which one your players are re reacting to the best. You can also try out different pricing um, um, and to, to, for, for maximum revenue. And also you can drive more traffic to your in-game store by, by experimenting where exactly you want to uh, you want to uh, 
place your special offers. So this is very similar to the concept of, of, of the example I was giving before with Angry Birds and ad placement. And where exactly do you want to put the ad placement um, for maximum ad revenue and maximum retention? And you can apply the same concept to special offers. Where exactly do you want to place the special offers in your player journey for maximum retention and also conversion rates? And you need to find a good balance uh, between these two. Um, yeah, and it, it it sounds all nice <laughs> in in the beginning, okay. and it, uh, it all sounds nice and green. But also, I would like to point out uh, some pitfalls of experimentation and some things um, that, that that you might uh, struggle with, um, and how we can actually overcome this. Um, uh, overcome this. Uh, so the, the problem with experimentation is even though you're you're delivering an optimized solution and something that you, you, you're gaining really good retention or you know, you're getting a lot of uh, conversion rates, um, you're still delivering the same experience. And the problem with this is that everybody is inherently different. So <laughs> when uh, I, I like to give this example, um, so when uh, me and my girlfriend, we're going to, uh, we, we go to Indian restaurants a lot. And, and usually when we go to Indian restaurant, they always ask us, what spiciness do you want? And me being Indian, I always ask for like Indian spicy, which is really spicy. And my girlfriend, she is German, and they I've noticed that they don't have a, they don't eat a lot of spicy food. So she would she would be <laughs> she would be dead if she ate the amount of spicy uh, spice that I ate. So they they usually ask uh, the, the the spiciness level and basically personalize personalize their dishes based on our our likings. And the same applies for 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 uh, mobile games as well, and 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 with experimentation, it becomes hard to personalize player experience. And you can do limited personalization through segmentation, but this is very limited because now you're delivering experiences to specific groups rather than an individual. And actually, even a lot of A/B testing platforms out there, uh, popular ones, don't have segmentation, which makes it hard, even harder, to to personalize your player experience. So here is just a visual representation um, of, 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 of the problem where you know you have three different users you know with, with, with three different colors representing their their uh, their taste and your your mobile game potentially is only uh, delivering one experience which is making one user happy, the purple one <laughs> and, and, the, and, and and you're not meeting uh, you're not meeting or fulfilling the needs of the other other players because it's not as personalized as it could be. And the solution to this. Um, oh, wait, Namal, we, we got a question real yeah. quick. So how should an indie developer manage all these tasks? Is it step by step? Uh, isn't it too slow for people who are already using the apps already? That came from BCS Bud on Twitch. So, so, so the question is, um, how do people start uh, doing all of this ex uh, experimentation, personalization? How do they start? Or how, how do they manage this? Yeah, how do they manage it? So usually, so, so, so as I said before, the first thing you would want to do is you want to see where your pitfalls are and so where your bottlenecks are. So the very first thing I would do is co start collecting data and start seeing where exactly you're suffering, your game is suffering, and, and wh which parts of your game are suffering, and focus on those and start first experimenting on those and trying to figure out how to improve those. Um, and that would be the first step. And once you are getting to a point where you, you're able to experiment and you're, you're able to improve, you incrementally improve your retention rates, incrementally improve your, uh, improve your conversion rates, then you can move on to personalization. Um, and I will talk about how we can do personalization as well. But I would recommend starting, it's, it's an incremental process. You can't do all of this at once. So I would start recommending collecting some, start collecting some data. Actually, even before that, start having a goal in your mind. So let's say if your game is suffering retention, that is your goal. And you want to start tracking metrics um, that, that are defining how well your retention is doing, for example. And then start tracking metrics. And then once you know your, your, um, uh, your bottleneck, then you can start uh, ideate, start ideation and start making ideas on how you can um, how you can uh, fix these bottlenecks and then start experimenting. And there are many tools out there that can help you with this. 
So for example, uh, Firebase has a good uh, A-B a -B testing uh, and experiment or experimentation uh, uh, platform, or Delta DNA also has a good experimentation platform. I'm gonna put a little plug in to <laughs> Elecular also <laughs> as a good uh, experimentation uh, platform. So there, there are a lot of tools out there that, can, um, uh, that you can use to get you started. Um, well, that was actually the next question that came in from Nightwolf was for small devs, which tools would you recommend for gathering and recording the data to learn from it? Mm -hmm. So, so there, so, so it depends on what game engine you're using. So for, for example, Firebase, um, Firebase is good for, for example, if you're making an Android game using their Android SDK or iOS, uh, Firebase is quite good. And I would recommend using that. If you're using Unity as a game engine, which is quite common, um, quite common for mobile games, then you could use a Delta DNA, or again, also, <laughs> so I'm going to put in a small plug, Elecular as well. <laughs> you can use also to do um, uh, to do A/B testing in Unity. So the point I'm making is, depending on your game engine, there are also A/B testing tools that are that are um, uh, that are specialized in that game engine. If that makes sense. Yep. No, you're good. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know if another one comes in. Cool. Perfect. So where were we? So yeah. So I've just explained um, some of the problems with experimentation, where you know you're delivering the same experience and not personalizing the content. And this is where we want to get to, where um, your your mobile game is able to deliver personalized content uh, and and able to basically figure out what each player wants and basically deliver based on that. Um, and it sounds, again, it sounds a little bit abstract at the moment. And you might wonder, OK, maybe this is too much uh, optimization and we don't even have to do this. But I will give some examples that might uh, convince you more on why I personally think personalization is important. And, um, and um, how do we actually do personalization? So as the answer to everything, AI is the answer to everything. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But um, we can basically use AI to uh, use individual player data and start making predictive models to understand what they actually want from your game based on the data they have emitted in game. Um, and basically, by making these predictive models and under understanding and predicting what they want, your game can start delivering um, delivering personalized content in order to improve your retention and monetization. And some examples of, of delivering personalized content, that, that, and, and this is hopefully going to make it more concrete for you, is let's say, for example, you are, you are um, um, giving special offers. If, if you think about it, actually, even before I start talking about special offers, I just want to give you a quick example of personalization outside the gaming industry so it makes more sense. So if you're, for example, if you watch Netflix or if you are, um, if you're browsing through, through Amazon, you will very often see recommendations for you. So based on the movies you've watched, you will, you will see recommended movies. Or based on the items you've bought in Amazon, you will see recommended items. So this is a form of personalization that enables you know, Netflix or Amazon to sell, you, to sell you more products or make you watch more movies. So you can apply the same concept also in, in, your, in your games. And this is not just mobile games. I, I, I just realized I keep on saying mobile games. But this is essentially any game where you have, where you have a sort of you know, in-app purchase or you have a subscription-based game where retention is very important for you. So we can start off giving an example with special offers. So um, if, if you're, you can start personalizing, for example, the products you're offering. Uh, to your players, so you can identify. Okay, a player is my, this player is uh, playing more melee characters and range characters. So maybe I can start offering uh, products that are more melee based. Um, and and for example, you can also start personalizing your uh, pricing. So for example, um, you can start. So some people are willing to pay more than others for the same product. So you can start uh, optimizing and, and start personalizing uh, personalize your pricing. And also, you can start uh, personalizing your push notifications and basically use predictive models to understand what your player's interests are and start, 
start pushing personalized push notifications. Actually, even for personalized push notifications, you don't need anything complicated as predictive models. You can even just use simple data like, OK, my player has interacted with, with, more, with this specific mechanic, so I'm going to give push notifications that are related to this one. Or, or you know, they're, they're, they're playing a more ranged character, so I'm going to give push notifications more, uh, give updates about this range character. So you don't even need to do anything very complicated, but at least start thinking about how you can personalize you know, your, your game to deliver personalized you know, co content that they want. It's almost like you, know, if, if, um, it's, you don't want to offer food to somebody who's thirsty. <laughs> you want to offer water to somebody who's thirsty, and you want to offer food to somebody who's hungry. And that's basically uh, the point I'm trying to get across over here. And the next thing, that, uh, and also another idea for personalization is difficulty levels. So not everybody likes to play a hard game, and not everybody likes to play an easy game. So you can basically um, judge the, how, how difficult you want your game to be based on uh, the player's data. And in just a moment, I will just give a high overview of how you can use AI to, to, to do all of this. Um, so basically, over here, it's just a small diagram and, and just to give a high overview and an idea of how you can start doing this. And also, there, um, there are tools out there uh, that can help you do this as well. And I will point them out in a moment. So here, you can see at the left that you have your players um, playing, uh, playing your game. This might be a mobile game, a PC game, um, whatever you have. And while they're playing your game, they're emitting in-game data. So for example, you know the transactions they're making in your game or for the product interactions they have in your game. So for example, if, they've, um, if, you've, uh, if you've shown them a special offer, have they clicked it or have they ignored it or have they scrolled through it or digged into it a little bit more? Um, so you can collect all of this in-game data and also gameplay events. So some events that are specific to your game mechanics you can collect all of this in-game data. And also, you can collect player profiles. So for example, uh, the demographics of the player or um, ad attribution data. So this, the ad attribution data might be hard. I don't even know if it's going to be possible or not <laughs> after the new iOS update. Um, but um, also social network data. So you can ask them, for example, to link your account, um, link their uh, social network account, for example, Facebook to your game and start getting data uh, from there. So, Naman, uh, mm -hmm. we got a question from MCA Lug on, on Twitch. On the personalization side, could you place players into groups and then just show them notifications based on their play styles? Yeah, so you can. So this is something that you do often um, in, in experimentation. So what you can do is, for example, let's say you have an idea you want to idea and you want to basically um, you want to test out your idea, what you can do is you can see how your new idea, for example, let's say a blue button or a red button, you can say, OK, now you're implementing a red button. And you can, you can see how this red button is affecting different segments of your group. And let's say you have um, uh, two different segments in your, in your game. Let's say you segmented experienced players and newer players. So you can see with experimentation where, how this red button is affecting newer players and affecting uh, more experienced players. This is a very uh, silly example, but <laughs> I'm not very creative at the moment. But this way, you can basically uh, then you, maybe you figure out that your red button actually it's getting more conversion rates with the newer players, but it's not getting as many conversions with your experienced players. So now what you can do is you can personalize and say, okay, I'm going to see if if this player is new, I'm going to serve this person a red button, and if the player is more experienced, I'm just going to serve them the blue button. I don't know, if th th did that make sense? Yeah, yeah, you're good, man. OK, mm -hmm. cool, cool. So um, so yeah, so back over here. So so I was saying that you can also uh, collect some player profile data using, um, using a social, uh, by, by allowing them to connect their social networks, uh, n network accounts like Facebook to your game and pull more, more of this data. And once you have these two, um, this in-game data and player profile, you can ingest all of this data in, and you can start training AI algorithms to ingest this data and start making predictive analysis. And again, there, there are tools out there that can, 
um, that can help you do this. So you do not need experience in AI um, or, or in, in making predictive models or in AI. Um, there are tools out there that, that, that as long as you produce this data, they can take this data and do all the AI and personalization for you. So once you have, so once you take this uh, data and then uh, you, 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 you can, you're able to make predictive models, you're able to make recommendations and send them back to your players. And in this case, recommendations might be special offers. So for example, which product offering to, 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 to offer to the specific player, at what price do you want to offer uh, this player, or what push notifications you want to give, or what reward you want to give after watching a rewarded ad. All of these things can be personalized uh, using this. Um, so in conclusion, um, the, the, the main things I want you to take away over here is um, you, you need to start by, by collecting data to identify your bottlenecks. And it's not going to help you by just randomly optimizing different places of your game. You need to identify bottle, uh, collect data in order to identify the weaknesses of your game and start focusing on those. And then you can start using experimentation, come up with ideas, and then use experimentation to basically fix these bottlenecks and improve your KPIs. And once you, you're starting to feel more comfortable over here and you're, you're able to incrementally improve your, your retention and your, uh, your monetization, you're going to come to a ceiling point where you're, it's, it's becoming really hard to improve. And this is, and this is where the, the, the limits of experimentation are, where it becomes hard to personalize. And this is when, at the end, you want to use, for example, AI to start personalizing your player experience to further improve uh, your KPIs. So yeah, that's, that's all uh, from my side. If you have any questions or you need any help, you know, any questions regarding this or you know, experimentation or personalization, I'm happy to guide you in the right direction. Or if you have any questions about what technologies or tools you want to use, I'm happy to, uh, to help you out. So you can, and also I'm, 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 I'm in the conference as well. So you can also send me a, you can, you can hit me up and, and we can have a quick chat as well if you want to. Um, and yeah, that's me. I'm just going to stop share. It's all good. I appreciate okay. that. That, that was, <laughs> that was good insight on something that a lot of developers don't, you know, really think of all the time because you do need, you know, like it or not, you do need these analytics. You do need to, but you also need to understand the data that you're getting. So my question was when you start doing AB testing and, you know, running these different experiments, is there a minimum number of users that you need to have before you can accurately start getting this data? Yeah. So, so it's very important when you're doing AB testing, you, you only conclude your AB test when you have a statistical significance. So, um, it's 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 common. It's very common to to run an A/B test, and then people fall into this trap where they stop the A/B test too early, and they don't make the most optimal decision. Now it's hard to say how how many exactly how how many users they are you need, but you do need like you need a good volume uh, in order to um, make your A/B test statistically significant. Um, I, it's hard to put a number because it really depends on on the kind of test you're running. I don't know. Maybe if you if you start having um, every month, maybe even even if you have like a thousand or five thousand uh, around, it, even above a thousand, I would say you know you could you could start A/B testing if you have even a thousand users per month. But of course, the more users you have, the easier it's going to be to to reach statistical significance. So if you have a thousand users playing your game, maybe it'll take two months to reach statistical significance. But if you have ten thousand users maybe takes two weeks to reach a statistical significance. So that does play an important role um, in, in A-B testing for sure. So we got a, another question from NC Alug on Twitch. How often do we need to go through the loop of experimentation and personalization? Every three months, every new feature release? So this is a continuous uh, process. So um, maybe I can go through some of my slides um, if I... Yeah, maybe over here. So, so this is a continuous process. So, so it's it's basically about uh, going through your game and identifying bottlenecks, and basically coming up with ideas, um, and, and continuously coming up with ideas and fixing them. So, I I wouldn't say it's something where you sit down every three months and then say, okay, let's run a couple, let, let's run run a bunch of A/B tests 
and let's see how that goes. It's more about, for example, let's say you implemented a new feature. So you, you, after you implemented a new feature, you want to start collecting data of that new feature and identify bottlenecks of that new feature and iterate over to make that new feature better. So it's, it's, it's basically what I want to say. It's something that you, you have a goal in the beginning. So you, let's, say, let's say, for example, your retention rate is 30% at the moment. And let's say your goal is to improve it to 40%. So you're going to continuously experiment um, and, and, and try out different ideas to make your game better until you get to 40% retention rate. And that's when you're done. So what are some of the most pop, I mean, not most popular, <laughs> what are some <laughs> of the most common issues that you've seen for these bottlenecks? So, so, um, so one for sure is, is a tutorial. So, so I, I feel like a lot of times uh, people don't put in a lot of effort in, in, in the tutorials. And this is very important because day one retention, um, you, you, you've made this whole game. And if your people, if 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 your players are leaving in day one, it's a shame because you have all of this content that is still untouched. And making a tutorial play, making a good tutorial that's engaging, and also um, a tutorial that's engaging and also you know not too short or not too long. Um, and this, of course, depends on your on each individual mobile game. And this is why experimentation is important. Is where you figure out how what is the best for your own mobile game. So, so I would say tutorials, also push notifications. I recently downloaded this game, <laughs> and this game was bombarding me with push notifications every every uh, one hour or two hours. I, oh my and God. I, I was literally just like, oh, a new ally has joined your clan. A new ally has joined your clan. <laughs> and so this is something, for example, where you can, for example, improve uh, improve and you know experiment with you know the timing of your push notifications and the content of your push notifications. Um, and also special offers is something where, 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 you, can, um, uh, where you can optimize and also ad placements uh, because you don't want to have annoying ad placements. Um, and at the same time, you don't want your ad placements, you, you want your ad placements to generate revenue as well, but you also don't want to, um, um, you, you don't want them to annoy your users too much. So these are some of the areas where I think it would be interesting to in, that that can you can potentially improve your game. It, it's amazing how difficult it is to get the right tutorial because you either run the risk of it being too short and people not fully comprehending, or you do you get those games sometimes that it's like, oh my god, I get it. I'm matching three <laughs> colors and I know how to just get them out of my way and let me play the game. And so. You know, if if anything, I think that tutorial stage is one of the ones that you absolutely need to be A B testing. Cause like you said, you know, if you lose somebody day one, you know, there's a whole lot of content that they never that they never touched. And it's just, you know, because of something that could have typically been broken out in in testing and discovered, but you know, it's not. Uh, so if anyone else has got any questions, uh, you know, no matter where you are on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, or even our Discord, drop them in here. We'll get them answered. We've got a few more minutes, you know, going on and before we jump over to the next one. So, you know, where do you see, I mean, aside from just like simply not doing testing, where do you see a lot of the small developers in the, in the indie teams making the biggest mistakes? In, in how they're gather, gathering this data, um, I think I think one of the things you need to do is um, I have uh, let me go yeah this one um, you need to figure out what your goal is and based on your goal you need to you need to figure out what metrics you want to uh, you want to start um, uh, logging and start tracking because as I said you know it's very easy in the beginning to get really excited and and you know log a bunch of data and log everything. And then once you have all of this data and you have a, really a lot, you can really log a lot of data, it becomes really hard to understand from there, okay, now what do I want to do? I have all of this data, but I don't have a goal in mind and I don't know where to search for bottlenecks or what I even want to do. So I think I would recommend starting, uh, starting with a goal that you have in mind. So maybe you have a high overview already of your KPIs, so for example, Hopefully you already know 
what your day one retention is, what your day seven retention is, what your day 30 retention is, what your conversion rates for your different in-app purchases are, what your um, what are the uh, uh, click-through rates for your ads. And if you have all of this high overview of, of, of your game, then you can start figuring out, okay, my day seven retention is really low. Let me put this as my goal and basically start tracking metrics that will help me define how well my day seven retention is doing. And based on this, you'll be able to figure out, okay, because of this, this, and this, my day seven retention is 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 hurting, is negative is being negatively hurt. And I can start experimenting and start optimizing in this area. So next question is does Unity have a built-in system for A B testing or should I experiment with multiple tools or stick with one? So so um so so you have you have multiple tools. Some tools are more well integrated into Unity than others. So for example, Firebase has as a tool for for Unity, but one of the problems I generally think is a problem is it's it, it's not very well integrated into into Unity, and it has a very bare C sharp library, but it's not very well integrated. And this is a problem. A lot of I see a lot of problems with A/B testing tool, and this is one of the reasons why actually initially I came up with the idea of Alecular is where I wanted to make a tool for A/B testing that is very well integrated into Unity and is a direct plugin into Unity and you don't even have to write any code. Uh, and, and you can actually run A-B tests without even writing any code um, in, 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 in Unity. And um, this is something that is missing in, in, in a lot of the A-B testing uh, uh, tools. And this is one of the reasons why I came up with this idea and, and ba basically implemented um, Alecular where you can essentially run A-B tests without even any code. And this is very common actually outside the, the gaming industry. If you look, for example, if you're doing user acquisition for ad campaigns or you're doing A-B testing for a website, it would be crazy if you had to write code for A-B tests. Um, you usually drag and drop stuff um, in, in, in the website UI and then you're all of a sudden, you know, you're able to run A-B tests. And this is something that was missing in the gaming industry. And this is one of the reasons I created Alecula where you can basically run A-B tests without even writing any code. All right, so we got time for one more. And then if you've still got questions after this, you know, the bars on our, our Discord server, we got a whole channel set up for post stream questions. Uh, you can pop over there and, and ask anything to your heart's content. And if you're not on the server, it's scrolling at the bottom of the screen there, but it's discord.gg slash indie game business. So uh, Nightwolf from Twitch says, when it comes to player retention, what do you think of the strategy of giving the player a late game character or build in the tutorial? And then something happens to drop them to level one. Would that show the players enough of what they could have or would it reveal too much? Uh, so you mean I think that's I, I think that's, I think that's a great idea. Again, go test it. You know, so for for every game, it's different, and and every game ha attracts a different uh, player base. So so if you have this idea, what I would suggest is make a quick mock up of it. Don't spend too much time. It's very important to experiment quickly. So um, what I would do is, if I were you, I would I would just make a quick implementation, experiment it, release it to 10% of your users, and see how this affects your retention. Um, and I, again, it's it's hard for me. I, you know, obviously, by, by the get-go, it sounds like a great idea, but every game is different. And that's why it's hard for me to give, um, say, OK, yeah, this is a good idea. It'll definitely work in your game. And that's why um, experiment with it and try it out. Awesome. Well, Namar. Nalan, thank you so much for, for being here this morning. We've um, This is all good stuff that we like to make sure people have at least some sort of you know, knowledge of. And so if you want to get in touch with them directly, it's, it's n.jane, that's J-A-I-N, yeah. at elacular.com, E-L-E-C-U-L-A-R. Mm -hmm. uh, so coming up next, the stream's going to go down for just a moment, and then we're going to be back with Eust, who uh, was at... Uh, I'm drawing a complete blank. Eust is one of the smartest people in the industry, and I cannot for a moment remember the name of his first company, but he sold it to, uh, oh, Super Data Research. So, and then he sold that, and now he's doing some consulting. So he's going to, you know, give us a overview of, of what happened this year and look at how the landscape in the industry is changing in 2021. So we'll be back momentarily. Thanks again, Amon, and we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.